Hey guys, come on downstairs. Welcome to Cal State Fullerton Titans Dynasty. It's episode number 13. And today we're doing the week preview for week number five. We're taking on the Pacific Tigers in this week. Let's look at the top 25 coming in to this week's action. This is the coaches poll. Oklahoma is number one after a 41 to 40 win over Notre Dame. They don't play this week. Number two is Clemson. They're three and zero. They beat NC State last week. This week they're at Wake Forest. Uh, number three, Ohio State, three and zero. They beat Jacksonville State last week. This week they are at Wisconsin. Florida's three and zero. They absolutely destroyed Tennessee a week ago. And this week they're at Clemson. Fifth ranked Texas A&M, four and zero, beat SMU last week. And this week they play at Arkansas. Number six, Georgia at 2-1. and one. Their only loss was to Clemson. They beat North Texas 59-21 a week ago. This week they are hosting number 12 LSU in a huge game that we'll definitely show you. Highlights from Alabama in at number seven. They're 2-1. and one. They beat Colorado State. They've got Ole Miss this week. Washington's 3-0. and oh. They beat up on Portland State. They'll play Arizona. Notre Dame, 3-1. They had that heartbreaking loss to Oklahoma a week ago. They will be hosting Michigan State. And Michigan comes in at number 10. They're 2-1. They beat UConn, and they will be at Rutgers in week number 5. Uh, University of Utah, 4-0. They are ranked number 11. They beat BYU 24-10. They don't play this week. LSU, 2-1. Lost to Auburn in an upset. They will be at Georgia this week, who is ranked number 6. We already discussed that one. Central Florida, 2-0. They beat Tulane, and they will be at East Carolina this week. Michigan State, 3-0, beat Rutgers a week ago, 41-17. They are ranked number 14. They'll play at number 9, Notre Dame. Nebraska, 3-0, beat Indiana State, and now they will take on the big school in Indiana, the Hoosiers, this week. Number 16, Oregon at 1-1. One one. They had a bye last week. They'll play Cal this week at home up in Eugene. And Auburn is in at number 17. They beat LSU a week ago. They are off this week. Penn State is number 18. They're 2-1. and one. They beat Kent State 33-14 a week ago. And they will be at Northwestern in this week number 5. Stanford, 3-0. and oh, Beat Arizona State 26-23. They come in at number 19. They'll be at number 23. Washington State and Virginia is 3-0. and oh. They beat Liberty. And they will be taking on Pittsburgh this week. Number 21, Mississippi State beat Troy 41 to 21. They are off this week. Missouri is in at number 22. They're 3 and 0. They beat Indiana. They will play Arkansas State this week. Washington State in at number 23. They beat San Diego 51 to 10 a week ago. They will be hosting number 19 Stanford. Iowa at 3 and 1 is number 24. They beat Western Michigan a week ago. This week they will play Minnesota. And number 25, Miami, beat South Carolina State a week ago, and they are off this week. All right, let's get to our Pacific Tigers preview. That's the team we are playing here in week number five. They come in at one and two. Uh, they are also resurrecting their program up in Stockton, and they, are, they got the first win out of these two uh, resurrected programs. Cal State Fullerton, we come in at 0 and 2. We've lost six straight, dating back to 1992. Uh, we, they lost uh, four in a row back in 1992, and now we've lost the first two here in this resurrected Cal State Fullerton Titans dynasty. All right, so we will be playing at home where we're averaging 11,749 fans. And let's look at the Tigers' leaders. Uh, Tavares McDuffie. 579 yards, one touchdown, and seven interceptions on the season. Not so great. Their leading rusher is only averaging 39.3 yards per game. Their leading receiver is Griffin. He's averaging 44.7. Morris is their leading tackler, tackler with 16. Abrams has two interceptions, and Johnson has three sacks for the Pacific Tigers in three games so far this season. Let's look at the Cal State Fullerton Titans after two games. Uh, Carl Morris, 372 yards, has not thrown a touchdown pass yet, has thrown three interceptions. Jack Weldon, 113 yards on the ground, averaging 56.5 yards per game. The running attack is struggling, to say the least, against Florida and New Mexico State. 
Marcus Burton, our leading receiver at 51.5 yards per game. Mooney is our leading tackler. Austin has one interception. And Patrick Hearn has four sacks in two games for us. Uh, one of the lone bright spots on our team so far. All right, let's look at the Pacific Tigers and how they got to this point. They started off the season up in Stockton against the Memphis Tigers. And McDuffie, the quarterback, number 11. This is the opening drive of the season for Pacific. And they get a big first down conversion there. Another pass out to the outside from McDuffie. Gets another first down. And Pacific's offense started to look like they might be a team that could move the football here against Memphis on this opening drive. They marched it right down the field. Even converted a fourth down and five here. No, they didn't. What am I talking about? They did not convert the fourth down and five. It was their second drive here that they marched all the way down the field and helped out by that pass from McDuffie down the sideline. Third down and seven here. Still no score in this game in this first week. And a pass right down to the goal line. You can see Pacific's marching their way down the field. And then all of a sudden, Memphis's defense decides to show up. Second down and goal. Running back stuffed in the backfield for a loss. Brings up third down and goal. McDuffie decides to keep it. He does not make it in. And then Pacific decides to go for it on fourth down and goal here. Instead of just getting points and taking the lead. And they throw an incomplete pass in the end zone. So Memphis with a goal line stand. And now here comes Brady White and the Memphis Tigers. And they had all kinds of speed against Pacific. On a third down and two, Brady White keeps it. Goes down the left hash marks to the five yard line and Memphis is knocking on the door as we start the second quarter here this week number one of Pacific. Brady White runs it in from five yards out. Touchdown Memphis. Now they're up 14 to nothing. Pacific has the ball on a third down and 12. McDuffie holding and looking. Nobody coming open. Now he fires it down the left side and the pass is picked off by Memphis. And we're going the other way. 21 to nothing Memphis now. McDuffie with another pass. Ill advised. Picked off. And this one is going to be taken back for six. And Memphis is starting to blow the doors off this game. It's now 34 to nothing. Brady White out there making blocks on the run. And it's a touchdown for Memphis. And they have put 41 on the board here against Pacific. Late in the fourth quarter, Brady White does it with his legs. And Memphis completes a 48 to nothing shutout of Pacific in week number one. The Tigers fall to 0-1. Well, the Pacific Tigers fall to 0-1. The Memphis Tigers are 1-0. Things don't get any easier the following week for Pacific. They are on the road in Norman, Oklahoma to take on Jalen Hurts and the third-ranked Oklahoma Sooners. Jalen Hurts runs it in, nine-yard touchdown. Oklahoma up 14 to nothing. Pacific at this point is just trying to get some points on the board. They are staring at a possible five straight quarters to open the season without scoring a single point. McDuffie, one of his interceptions. This one goes back for six as well. And Oklahoma goes up 21 to nothing. Now 31 to nothing for the Sooners. Jalen Hurts standing at midfield, firing it down the right side. What a catch by C.D. Lamb. And the Sooners are down inside the 20. Jalen Hurts standing in the pocket over the middle. Another touchdown to Nick Baskeen. It's 38 to nothing Oklahoma, and things get worse. McDuffie throws it right to a defensive lineman. And Oklahoma's knocking on the door again. It's 38 to nothing. Jalen Hurts keeps it himself. Now 45 to nothing Sooners. And things would get even worse. The Sooners would go on to win 62 to nothing. And Pacific now has been outscored 110 to nothing to start the season. But then they turn around in week four at home and beat South Alabama 24 to three. 
So that's where we're at with the Pacific Tigers. They are one and two. They play Cal State Fullerton here in week number five, their fourth game. And then they will be at Arkansas State. They've got Toledo, South Florida, and Ole Miss, Akron, Troy, and Vanderbilt. They only play 11 games here in this first season back in the world of college football. All right, let's look at some players for the Pacific Tigers. Linebacker Michael Johnson, a sophomore. His strengths, has pretty good sideline to sideline speed, good acceleration. He's a hard hitter, he's able to get off blocks, and he has great awareness for a sophomore. Some of his weaknesses is he tires late in games, not good in coverage, in man coverage, and he is returning from an injury. He has three tackles and one interception and one pass breakup this season in three games, although he hasn't played in all three of them. Strong safety, Mike Abrams, number 21. He's a sophomore as well. His strengths are closing speed. He's absolutely shot out of a cannon, covers ground in cover two, uh, limits big plays, and he jumps out of the gym, so he will win a lot of jump balls. His weaknesses, he's not a great run stopper for a safety, and don't put him on an island. He's a terrible castaway can't play man coverage he does not get off blocks well he has 14 tackles and two interceptions in three games and one defensive touchdown against South Alabama cornerback Danny Douglas number 17 he's a redshirt sophomore he's a good cover corner a good acceleration to close the gap if he's beat off the line of scrimmage he can make up ground he is just as good in zone and he is a man he has loose hips good agility he can jump with bigger receivers he's not a big corner himself weaknesses he gets beat in press coverage a lot so he has to make up ground needs to put on some muscle and he doesn't have good hands he's got 11 tackles and a pass breakup so far this season defensive end Tim Newby number 35 he's seen it all as a senior transfer into the program he's good in pursuit he's durable he gets a quick jump off the line and he's a solid block shedder his weaknesses he can get pancaked by stronger tackles he tires easily and he's not a great run stopper. He's not going to plug up the line of scrimmage very well against the run. He has six tackles and a sack so far this season for the Pacific Tigers. That is Tim Newby. Linebacker Stephen Harrell, number 50. He's a sophomore as well. A young Pacific Tigers team. He's a good tackler, has above average speed for a linebacker. He's durable, he hits hard, and he's very strong as a sophomore. Weaknesses, he can't cover at all, man or zone. Just a terrible cover linebacker. He can't catch, and he might as well be white, meaning he can't jump. Five tackles, because white man can't jump, you know. Five tackles so far in three games for Stephen Harrell. Let's look at the offensive side of the football for the Tigers. Tavares McDuffie, number 11. He's a redshirt sophomore. He's got a strong arm, very strong arm. He's seen it in some of the highlights. He has above average speed. He's durable. He's fairly accurate, but not not a pinpoint passer he can be elusive in the pocket at times his weaknesses he's learning by making mistakes he's fumble prone and he's basically a turnover waiting to happen uh, he's thrown a whole bunch of interceptions so he's learning by making mistakes he's got 579 yards a touchdown and seven picks an 88.8 qbr running back mark bishop he's a little scat back Really good in ball security, he's elusive. His best move is his juke move, and he's a good pass catcher out of the backfield. His weaknesses, he's not really good at picking up blitzers. He gets run over by him quite often, doesn't run behind his pads, and he does not break tackles. This season, he has 118 yards and one touchdown in three games as their leading rusher. So coming into this game, we have home field advantage, and I'm giving us a three and a half point spread over Pacific in this one even though they have won a game and we have not but the home field advantage hopefully will be in our favor let's look at some other games in week five that we will be keeping our eye on number 24 Iowa is at Minnesota Iowa five and a half point favorites Arkansas State at number 22 Missouri Missouri's 4-0, Arkansas State's 2-2. Two two. I'm giving Missouri 21.5 points in that one. Number 19, Stanford at number 23, Washington State. Giving Stanford 4.5 points in that. Michigan State, number 14 at number 9, Notre Dame. I'm going with Notre Dame at 1.5. Uh, Arizona at Washington. Washington ranked number 8. Both teams are 3-0. Up in Seattle is where the game will be played. I'm giving the Washington Huskies an 8.5 point edge. Number 12, LSU at number 6, Georgia. I'm going with Georgia at 3.5 because of home field advantage. 
Number five, Texas A&M is at Arkansas. Uh, both teams are undefeated, but I'm going with the Aggies at nine and a half. Ohio State at Wisconsin. Uh, one of the few tough road games that Ohio State will play. Nevertheless, I'm giving them an 11 and a half point advantage over Wisconsin, who has already lost a game this season. Number two, Clemson. Uh, I feel bad for Wake Forest in this game. Clemson is now number two after Oklahoma takes over the top spot in the rankings, and they are not going to be happy about that. So Clemson's going to take it out on Wake Forest. I'm giving them 22 and a half point favorites, even though uh, they may that you may want to pick Clemson to cover the spread in that one. Game number ten: SMU at TCU. SMU one and one. TCU is 2-1 and one in the battle for the Iron Skillet. I'm going to give TCU the edge at home in Fort Worth as a 9.5 point favorites. The battle for Dallas there in the battle for the Iron Skillet. All right, that's it for our Week 5 preview. Get set. Next up, it's game day. We'll take on the Pacific Tigers from Titans Stadium. It's Cal State Florida and Titans Dynasty here on Mama's Basement Sports Gaming.